Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on factoring polynomials completely. So today, we're going to factor polynomials by grouping, and then we're going to discuss what it is to factor a polynomial completely. The question I want you thinking about today is what is the best first step when factoring a polynomial? So there's many, many steps that you could follow in many different pathways, many strategies, different methods. But out of all of them, in my opinion, there's one best first step. And hopefully by the end of this lesson, that will become your best first step. So today we're going to talk about factoring by grouping, which I've actually already done in a previous video with you. However, I didn't really refer to it as that. So before when we were just trying to learn to factor, I wanted you to understand how everything was related when you factored a trinomial. But now I'm going to explain to you why that's called factor by grouping and how you can use it to factor any four term polynomial. So here we go. To factor a polynomial completely, and this is for any, step one, if necessary, factor out the greatest monomial factor. So you look at all terms and see if they have a greatest common factor in common. If they don't, they don't. But that would be a great first step because that is the one way to ensure that you have completely, this is where the word completely comes into effect, that you've completely factored something. Number two, we want to look for a special pattern. So the previous video, I talked to you about sum and difference pattern and perfect square trinomials. So if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you look at that so that you can have um, a discerning eye when you're looking at these polynomials and these patterns, if you can identify them, help you to factor. And step three, if the polynomial is a trinomial, then we're going to rewrite the BX term, the center term, into two terms using factors of A times C, which again, I've modeled this in a previous video that would be helpful for you to watch if you haven't seen it or don't know what this means. And step four, I'm going to show you how to factor a four term polynomial by grouping, which is actually easier than a trinomial that needs to be grouped. All right, so here we go. So students often look at me like there's no way I can't do this, but actually it's easier than factoring a trinomial by grouping. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first two terms and the last two terms. So the only thing I want you looking at right now is the first two terms of the polynomial with four terms. And we're going to look for the greatest common factor between these two terms, which is x squared. And then when I factor that out, I have x squared times x plus 3. So look at that. x squared times x is x cubed, and x squared times 3 is 3x squared. And here's where the magic happens when we factor by grouping. If I've factored out the greatest common factor between these two, num two terms in this four term polynomial, then I know this common, this is going to be the common binomial factor between the two. So I instantly can go write the x plus 3. And then I just look up here to say, well, what times x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 6? And it's 2. And coincidentally, that 2 is the greatest common factor of the last two terms. So now I'm going to use what I know about factor by grouping. I'm going to take the coefficients, the factors that I factor out of my common factor, x plus 3. So here's my common binomial factor. And then x squared, the common greatest common factor of the first two terms, add the greatest common factor of the second two terms. And x squared plus 2, I look at this to make sure this is where you want to look, and this is where the phrase completely factored comes into play. I look at x squared plus 2 and say, can I factor this now? So if we've identified special products, I know that x squared is a perfect square, but 2 is not a perfect square. So then if I have a binomial of x squared plus a factor and they're not both perfect squares, it's completely factored. So this is factored of this four term polynomial. All right, your turn. I would like you to pause the video, factor this four term polynomial and come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So I'm gonna divide it up, first two terms, last two terms. So I'm looking for the greatest common factor and that is x squared. Both of these terms have a greatest common monomial factor of x squared. x squared times x plus three 
would be equivalent to x cubed plus 3x squared. Again, the magic, I know that this needs to be my common binomial factor. And then what times x plus 3 is equal to x plus 3? Factor of 1. So remember that 1 is a factor. And the greatest common factor of two terms could be 1. And we need to write that 1 there. I know often in algebra we say that 1 is invisible, but we need this right here. So we're going to take that greatest common factor of each pair of terms, and it becomes one binomial factor. And then we have x plus 3 is our common binomial factor, which is our second. And there we go. And I look at this, and even though x squared is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square, it would be a sum and difference pattern because there is no x term. So the bx term is non-existent. So therefore, that means this would have to be negative to make that zero pair because I would have to have x minus 1 times x plus 1 because negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, not positive 1. So x squared plus 1 cannot be factored any further, and this is completely factored. All right, try this one. Again, remember, in my opinion, the best first step is to look for a greatest common factor. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for a greatest common factor. They both have a monomial greatest common factor of 7x squared. 7x squared times x squared would be 7x to the fourth. 7x squared times negative 4 is negative 28x squared. So now I need to look to identify if it's completely factored. And it's not. x squared minus 4 is a special uh, polynomial. Because they're both perfect squares, I see the sum and difference pattern. So I have x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. When we FOIL, we'd get 2x and negative 2x, which is 0x. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So this is a special product. x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2 is the sum and difference pattern and equivalent to x squared minus 4. So this polynomial, completely factored, is 7x squared multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. All right, here's another one for you. Remember the best first step. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So the first step is the greatest common factor of all three terms is 2y. That leaves me y squared minus 6y plus 9, which this is not completely factored. So y subtract 3 multiplied by y subtract 3 would be equivalent. So again, this is a special product. I have a perfect square and a perfect square. And then the center term is 2 times that last perfect square. So if we look at that, 3 is the square root, and this is a sum of negative 3 and negative 3. And when I multiply negative 3 by negative 3, I get 9. So again, if you haven't seen my special product, factoring special products video, I take a look. It helps you learn to identify special products that need to be factored. And that's it. So you could write it, I'd accept it like that, or nice and tidy, y minus 3 squared. All right, here we go. This one's a bit of a challenge for you, but I would consider rearranging the terms. Remember, the order doesn't matter when you're going to factor. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's see how you did. So the first thing I did was I rewrote this so that I had x squared plus 2x plus xy plus 2y. So what I did was I put it in standard form, but I just grouped it so that I knew that these first two terms had a greatest common factor and the last two terms had a greatest common factor. So there were only two terms with y, so those were pretty easy for me to discern and put those at the end. All right, here we go. Looking at the first two terms, the greatest common factor is x, x times x plus 2. Again, our magic works here. This has to be the greatest common binomial factor. So I ask myself, what times x plus 2 is going to equal the last two terms? And I can see they both have a greatest common factor of y. And it works. y times x plus 2 would be equivalent to the last two terms. So I rewrite this as my greatest common factors is one binomial x plus y multiplied by my greatest binomial factor of x plus 2. And there you have it, completely factored. 
So that's how you factor polynomials completely. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today and that you'll subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and I hope you have a great day.